Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here today. We are sending this massive vessel off to the moon. There is a very special payload in this thing. You are going to love this thing. It's, uh, yes, it's got a very large booster stage. The booster is uh, quite over-engineered. It's going to get us all the way to orbital velocity and more, but the idea is to bring this booster all the way back into the atmosphere and burn it up. So we're actually going to punch straight through orbital velocity while keeping our periapsis down low enough so that the vessel can come down and burn up in the atmosphere. The booster vessel, I should say. Now, of course, this vessel is available to you down in the description. There is a link to the craft file so you can take this and play with it and alter it. You might want to add all sorts of different bits and pieces. Uh, you can do whatever you want with this thing. So, uh, yes, have fun with that. You'll see here I'm basically punching straight through the atmosphere at quite a velocity. We uh, are trying to get as much horizontal velocity as possible. And believe it or not, even though we are punching through the higher atmosphere here uh, at this velocity, we're not losing a great deal due to atmospheric drag because of this massive fairing. And the fairing <laughs> you can see is actually basically as big as the booster. It's almost ridiculous. You'll see there our periapsis there around 15 kilometers. So this is going uh, to come all the way back down and uh, yes, re-enter the atmosphere quite spectacularly. Uh, for the moment now, we're just uh, decoupling this thing. We'll just give it a slight burst just to separate ourselves before we drop this massive fairing. It is still glowing there with all the heat that we generated punching through the atmosphere. So we'll just drop this. There we go. Uh, switch the lights on. And uh, yes, you'll see there we have got a massive tower and we are punching this tower. Uh, just going to continue uh, thrusting towards the prograde marker there until we get our intersect with the moon there. Now, obviously, we picked our launch time so that our launch could basically punch ourselves all the way up to the moon without needing to do any orbits or corrections or anything like that. So just popping out those solar panels, deploying the antenna, and there we go. There is our vessel that is on its way to the moon. There are no Kerbals on board this thing just yet. There is going to be a future mission involving Kerbals with this massive moon tower. For the moment, we are going to just let Kerbin fall away from us there, just awaiting the sunrise to come out from behind Kerbin there. And there we go. Beautiful, beautiful. I, this, this game just never stops surprising me. Just some of the awesome cinematic shots you can get from there. And uh, obviously now we are falling in towards the moon. And we'll get ready to do our retrograde burn to uh, basically drop our massive tower here down into a low moon orbit. Just waiting, of course, until we get to our periapsis and we have got our vessel pointed now towards the retrograde marker. Just need to wait until our time to periapsis is quite low before we switch those engines on and we are obviously burning just to drop ourselves initially into a moon orbit. Now, what I want to do here with this mission as well is try to land our base at an inclination of exactly zero. We want this to be nice and easy to uh, get to with other vessels. So we want to bring this down right on the equatorial plane. So we're just time warping now until our time to equatorial descending node is zero. So you can see down over on the right hand side there, we have a time to equatorial descending node readout there. So we're just burning as we hit that zero second mark and uh, you'll see up in the top left we have our inclination right down now to 0 0.05 a slight tweak just one more tiny tweak and we'll get this right down and there we go 0 0.00086 i don't think i'm going to get it much closer than that so what i want to do now is a slight burn here to drop both our apoapsis and periapsis right down just so that i can do a fairly low pass and i want to pick roughly where I want to come down. So I want to come around in a fairly low orbit and we'll just time warp around here where I'm aiming for. And you'll probably have noticed with the name of this vessel, this vessel is called the Far Side Tower. Now, uh, obviously most of you have probably already figured out that I want to land in the Far Side Crater. So I'm just doing a quick uh, orbital pass here. I essentially want to find the best place to land over the far side crater and of course it was about this time that i realized oh bollocks this is actually the northwest crater i'm over at the moment the uh, far side crater is the one before this so i'm coming around here on another pass and i've uh, done obviously a slight retrograde burn just to keep dropping 
that orbit right down. So we now have a very low orbit around the moon, our apoapsis at 11 kilometers and our periapsis at only 3 kilometers. So yes, uh, we're coming around here quite quickly, hopefully not uh, skimming too many mountains. Uh, that one was just a little close. And uh, the idea here is to come down in the far side crater quite low. And of course, as I get to around here, I'm realizing, hmm, I think perhaps I'm going to have trouble with this little mountain coming up here. Uh, yes, I might. Yep, I need a slight burst there <laughs> because, yep, this is going to be close. God, oh, God. <laughs> that, uh, yep. Yeah. That was kind of brown trousers time there, uh, just uh, now doing our retrograde burn to drop ourselves down into the far side crater. I was skimming that just a little uh, closer than I thought. I actually thought that I had a periapsis just a little higher than I thought I did. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, wipe off all of our horizontal velocity now. And because I had quite a bit of extra delta V in this last stage that I've got here, I uh, could probably just waste a little bit thrusting back this way because the ground over here looks just a little flatter. So we might just ditch this here because we need to land with our upper stage engines. So yes, wasting a little fuel there, breaking all of the efficiency rules. And uh, we'll just do a suicide burn right towards the ground here and engaging those last thrusters. The booster explodes there very cinematically on the ground and touchdown there with our massive tower. So here we are now in the far side crater just on the equatorial plane and we can now plan all sorts of future missions to the far side tower. So there we go. As you can see, we have plenty of battery storage, four of the massive batteries there. We've got loads of fuel left in this stage for a future jump to another biome if we want to. We have loads of uh, solar panel generation ability there. And we have our little rover here, which we're going to uh, point to here. And we're going to undock this and we're going to just uh, land this down on the surface. I will decouple the node there. There we go now, just slowly engage our engine. So we have an action group 0 and 9 to set either the vertical lift engines or the horizontal thrust engines. So I'll just use those vertical lift ones just to bring us down onto the ground nice and safely and gently. There we go. So imagine, if you will, a rover that kind of looks like a speedboat made out of space plane parts using rockets for extra thrust when we need it. And, this, I mean, this is kind of the weirdest rover I've ever made, frankly. <laughs> Just, I don't even know what it looks like. But I will say it's kind of cool. We've got uh, our standard pickup here just using our wheels. So we can uh, bomb along like this, nice and slow and steady, if we uh, just want to do the typical rover sort of driving around and uh, what you'll notice as well is these rover wheels are really quite springy they've got a lot of suspension in them and it lets you uh, just bomb along the surface quite happily you can uh, you can impact on the ground quite hard without uh, hitting the uh, the space plane parts there up above Although that being said, what you'll notice here is uh, because I was not using the stability assist correctly, I decided I was going to try to avoid a rock which I had no reason to avoid <laughs> and just kind of lost control of this thing. But because I have the torque of both of those Mark II space plane parts, then I can easily rotate the vessel uh, on demand really and I was very lucky there not to wipe off one of those solar panels. Nevertheless, I was able to survive that and uh, yes, after getting my bearings again, We'll just line our way back up. I'd like to take a longer journey than this to show you what this thing can really do. Uh, now, how far have we gone already? We can just zoom in here. So we've already traveled quite a distance from the far side tower. Of course, roving around on just rover wheels is not quite fun enough in my opinion. So we can engage our rear facing engines there, those little twitch engines. And we can get up as much speed as we want to. And uh, we can switch to our uh, vertical VTOL engines to uh, just lessen the impact when uh, we need to. So yes, we might need to do that right now because this is a bit of a drop. So we can engage them just as we're about to touch down just to uh, keep this thing nice and happy. As long as we keep those Mark II parts off the ground when we impact, we should be able to keep this thing fairly happy. The wheels themselves there have got quite 
a uh, as I say quite a lot of suspension so uh, yeah they they can uh, travel along at quite a speed another burst there as we touch down again passing through all of those uh, all of those surface scatter objects so obviously they do not hurt you uh, as you pass through them which is a good thing because you will see me pass through plenty of them and uh, whoop there <laughs> just skim through another rock there now the easiest way to control this, you'll notice there I have uh, got the stability assist set on pointing to prograde, uh, the prograde marker, and that is because it means that it will always face the correct direction, even if it sort of bumps or tilts off course a little, it's going to automatically, uh, you know, point to the correct direction that the vessel is moving towards, and then that means the only thing you have to worry about is the rotation of the vessel, and also not slamming into the ground too hard, so just uh, giving a little burst there with those twitch engines whenever you need to, and uh, yeah, you'll see there, it's, whoop, <laughs> that was, that one there was probably pretty close, I nearly lost it there, I would say. But uh, yes, obviously the footage here is also sped up just a little, and oh, you'll see there, I just kind of got angled off, and this is where I start to get into trouble. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> so when this happens, uh, yes, you need to uh, use your VTOL engines just a little more than you'd really like to. So just skimming, and quickly, it is almost like going along a half pipe now, and straight out the top. So having a lot of fun with that, obviously, and uh, yes, I decided after quite some time of driving that it was probably time to make our way back, and there was still plenty of fuel here, so we engaged the Twitch engines to basically travel most of the way back to our far side tower without actually touching the ground, just because I was kind of lazy at this point. So that, whoa, yeah. <laughs> obviously I was, uh, yeah, not quite concentrating enough there. So eventually got back with not a great deal of fuel to spare. So that was a bit of a demo what this little rover can do. It's a lot of fun. We've had no kerbals in it yet, but uh, looking forward to actually popping some kerbals in for a bit of a joyride with this thing. For the moment, we will park this thing outside the far side tower for a future mission. Obviously, this little vessel could uh, dock and refuel and do all those sorts of wonderful things. So after quick loading just to the point where I undocked that rover so that we had all of our fuel still there, uh, that means that we can use the rover fully fueled in a future mission with Kerbals. And uh, yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. For the moment, we can uh, demonstrate as well how much Delta V the actual tower itself still has. So we're just going to head uh, head north here, and we'll just intercept with one of these uh, flags up here. I've been to uh, I've been to these areas before and dropped flags, so we'll just try to intercept with one of those flags. So it's just a good demonstration of the capability of the vessel we have here. We've got a lot of Delta V, enough really, and you'll see there we're at over 430 meters per second in our velocity, and we need to now wipe that off to land at this target. So this vessel is uh, fully capable of getting all the way to orbital velocity and back again. This makes this vessel really good for biome hopping. If you can land uh, with your initial landing zone uh, close to three or four biomes, then you can actually hop this vessel to all biomes and collect all of the science you need, fill up all those science labs, and obviously there's more than enough science labs to uh, take any amount of scientific data than you would ever need. And if you wanted to, of course, you could also add some drills and uh, that sort of thing so that you could also mine some new fuel. Uh, you really wouldn't need to do that a great deal, but uh, you know, you can if you want. The craft file is in the description for you to modify as you see fit. Now after all of your fuel has been burned and you really don't need those side tanks anymore, they are of course decouplable. And uh, if you just leave a little bit of fuel on the tank, you can do something a little like this. Just slowly thrust off the ground, get a little bit of rotation, just pull in those solar panels just in case everything goes pear-shaped. And there we go, we can launch them there, and our tower will just hopefully just touch down gently while our external tanks head away. And they should impact on the moon surface somewhere. So, although saying that, those tanks were almost full because I'd quick loaded again, so... Oh yes, okay, they are actually capable of getting quite a distance, probably well past orbital velocity of the moon. Uh, it'll depend where they decide to point. Let's see, where are they going to point? Let's speed up the footage here. And, oh yes, this is going to escape the uh, velocity needed 
to uh, exit the moon. Hmm, I wonder where it's going. One, <laughs> we've got 1500 meters per second. 2,000 meters per second. Wow, okay, there's quite a bit of delta V in that, and yes, it could almost make it to Juna, and that's probably using a terrible trajectory because it's a random one. There we go. So, yep, you could stick a Kerbal seat on one of those and take a joyride. That'd be a bit of fun. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. Please tune in next week as well. I'm planning something a little different and a little bigger than usual, so please do tune in. Uh, thank you all for watching. All of your support is just absolutely amazing. If you have any questions for me, whack them down in the comments below. Thank you to all my existing subscribers for supporting the channel, and if this video has earned your subscription, welcome to the channel. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my Killer Ton 2 Orbit mission. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you by some sad little robot. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.